what I wanted to, uh, I started looking into the European Union. Uh, you want to know what card is? <laughs> That's what the card right, is. Douglas, it's a Jaguar. It's oh, a really? Jaguar. Very nice. It's okay. a Jaguar. Right. Um, and here in Portugal, uh, we're talking about somewhere in they range anywhere from 7500 euros to 15 yeah you know 15000 euros yeah in spain in spain i can get the identical car for 4000 euros at the most wow. okay wow. there's a huge difference in 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 price okay yeah. according to the european union legislation i don't know if you've got that document queued up yet um well the, well the link you sent to me sadly just took i, I I'm, I'm now on your blog how old is the blog piece that you're referring to uh, your oh blog? i thought i sent you the the exact you did but that went somewhere uh, that went uh somewhere else for the time. okay i'll tell you i'll tell you what let me do it one more time i've got invalid I, parameters at the moment. okay i there are here it is okay yeah. okay Copy. Well, you know, I've got. I mean, this is worth sharing because I've got your. I've got your blog uh, up on the screen now, um, and your most recent. Exactly, I think is um, is what you were just writing about. So, if you have a look on the screen for me, Bruce, there it is. There's your. Um, uh, there is the, the blog, uh, Pastor Bruce's blog. Everybody, that's over there on WordPress, and currently, some um, yeah, inside out voices and some commentary about being in Spain. Spain is loud. <laughs> one of the, okay. See if you can get that now. So do I? Do I scroll? Keep scrolling down to get to the. No, no. Uh, I just board. sent you a new link. Oh, did you? Right. Okay. Very good. All right. Let me try that now. Then. Um, oh, single market. Yes. There you go. There oh. we've got it now. Okay. okay. Uh, give me a moment just to bring that up onto the screen. Yeah, and continue with the story, if you will. Okay. So I looked into you know I did research on on the European Union and. Um, uh, I'm going to switch off for a second so that I can read. Um, uh, it says the yeah, European. Yeah, no, no. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me just read a couple of things. The European Union aims to enable European Union citizens and legal residents to study, live, shop, work, and retire in any EU country while enjoying products from all over Europe. To accomplish this, it ensures the free movement of goods, services, capital, and persons in a single EU internal market. Well, yeah. sounds like a great deal. By removing technical, legal, and bureaucratic barriers, the EU also allows people to trade and do business freely in a single market. Okay, so that sounds really, really good. But when you get into um, uh, when you get into the specifics like for cars, according to European Union law, more competition in car distribution leads to lower prices. By finally tearing down remaining obstacles to cross-border vehicle purchases, consumers will make use of the full potential of the single market for car purchases. Okay. Yep. Did you, did, uh, okay. So totally getting the gist here. Totally getting the gist here, and this is a long-standing problem here, isn't it? That you're leading us into. I uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Now um, I must say that because we have a house in Spain, and because I have the NIE in Spain, which is the same as the NIF in Portugal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. According to the law, I am able to purchase a car in Spain, but I cannot register it in Spain. I have to bring it back to Portugal. Why okay? is that? Because I'm not a resident. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is this is going con con counter already to the European Union requirements. It They're so saying is. that in 2003, they did away. They realized that the comp that the, the prices from one country to another was so crazy and different that yeah. by making it a single union and that you can buy wherever you want to buy, all right, yes. and yeah. bring it back, that it would increase competition amongst the European Union nation countries. 
right? Yeah. Well, yeah. that sounds all well and good. So I go to Spain, uh, I'm in Spain, and I have the, the requisite documents. I, um, that's uh, that's exactly, that's the bottom line. The, the, Let's not give away the punchline there, though. Uh, that's exactly right. What I'm, for, Spain will allow me to purchase a car, but it will not allow me to register it in Spain because I'm not a resident of Spain, all right? Now, this goes totally contrary to European Union law. It certainly does, yeah. So, um, the next step, I, I figured, okay, all right, so <laughs> maybe I'll do this. Maybe I will buy the car in Spain and register it in Spain, you know, because I have all, all of the documents. No, Spain will not let me, they will let me buy the car in Spain, but I cannot register or own it in Spain. I have to take it back to Portugal, okay, without insurance, because Spain won't give me insurance until it's registered, and Portugal won't give it me insurance until it's re registered. And to register it in Portugal, as, as one of your viewers uh, aptly uh, noted, it, it will cost me more between the insurance, the fees, you know, for it to comply with spending. And all of this was supposed to be done away with. The same thing with insurance, car insurance. There's, because the rates differ from country to country, the European Union has done away with that, supposedly. But in Spain, the, no matter what insurance company that you try to get, you know, insurance with for, for your car, they'll ask you, have you had continuous insurance coverage for at least the past five years? Yes, not a problem. I've had it in Portugal. Okay, give us the last five digits of your policy number. So you put in the five digits of your policy number and Spain cannot read Portugal's insurance number, which again was supposed to be done away with in a separate clause here in in, in you know uh, in the U European Union regulations. So um, it, it's a question of you know um, practice what you preach. Uh, you know what well, it, it says on paper is not it's, necessarily. Yeah, it's, it seems to me it's a matter of politicians doing what they damn well please again and as usual. Um, that, it's, it's, the, it's the least of both worlds, isn't it? So uh, on the one hand, you could say um, in a federal Europe, uh, there would be a, an advantage for the citizens of that federation um, yes. to enjoy a uniformity of pricing. Uh, on the other hand, I think, and as you put it, that if the countries were able to compete with each other, that might also be good for the citizens living within that competitive federation. But it's neither, is it? The way it's worked out right. is that it, you, you, you get neither of those, uh, which goes against the, the whole idea upon which the thing is sold. Um, and this is just causing frustration to individuals like you and many others, actually, has to be said, who find themselves having that bright <laughs> idea of like, hold on, I'm, I'm in the EU. Why don't I just go to Germany or Spain and buy a car cheaper? which is exactly what, as you spotted, uh, Tony was going with this. You can buy the car cheaper in Spain. However, once you legalize... Antonio Barbosa is absolutely correct. Cost you about is... We have extremely high taxes and some are illegal as per EU standard. Portugal just simply chooses to pay the fine and continues to do so. And it's been going on for many years now. Um, the other, uh, what, last year, I think it was, wasn't it, Susan, when you were selling your Finnish registered 2007 van, it was difficult. And I came up with the idea, just a flash of brilliance, wasn't it, Susan? Recommended selling it to another Finn in Portugal. Brilliant, that worked. So they flew here, did they not? Or they were here and then drove it back to Finland. That is what people are resorting to. So where are we in the story then, Bruce? You decided well, not to after, after probably no, spending a lot of time and money. Um, the plot get uh, 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 another point that needs to be brought out, and I'm sure that many of you are um, your audience have experienced this dealing with one of Portuguese, you know, bureaucratic institutions or another, is what they tell you in one place is something different that they tell you in another place. 
Yeah. I mean, you can, in Lisbon, they might tell you something different from Algarve. In Porto, they may tell you something different than Castelo Branco. There's no consistency. And even right. if you bring a copy of the law, okay, in, in, in Portuguese with you, you know, on an, an appointment, no, no, they're not interested. Ultimately, yeah. um, as Antonio said, we decided that um, we were just going to go ahead and buy a car in, in Portugal. It, it, the money turned out about the same. It turned out to, you know, because if you bring in a car from another country, it has to go through this whole system where first you have to pay 300 euros at least to get a documentation that comes from Estonia or some strange, you know, country that showing that documents that the car is actually what it says it is. Okay. And yeah. you have to take that to the customs office and then the customs it goes round and round. So apart from the money, we decided it's just easier to go with Portugal yeah. know, and, 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 and bought a car in Portugal. How much time and money had you spent by that point just to get back to square well, one? Not counting the 3,500 euros that I was scammed out of, which is another story during the point that I, but that's important enough that we'll save that for the next chat. You know, the things to be aware of. Um, right. I, I, I'm pretty astute when it comes to, you know, hey, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the chancellor in Nigeria who's contacting me and wants to give me $2 million because, you know, uh, I'm the closest relative. Now, that that kind of stuff no longer gets to me. But this looked like an, an above board deal, a proposition. Everything made sense. I got all legal um, documents, documents of sale, documents, you know, um, but it turns out that they stole my money. And they never brought me wow. the car. Wow. Okay. Um, so, but we, we, well, it sounds like we don't have time to go into that. I mean, you've got to leave yeah. us quite soon, haven't you? Um, yeah. and, you and I think. But I would know. like, I, I'd be happy to answer it before well, I go. If, you, if any of your viewers have questions, I'd be happy well, to answer. Yeah, we, do, we had a, a different question actually about Spain and Portugal, which I think is important to go back to. A, a comment about this from Doug. That's the trouble with EU diktats because the EU isn't a federal system yet. It's just a haphazard amalgamation of different jurisdictions. And that's a really good de uh, description, I think, uh, almost defining the situation there that uh, Bruce found himself uh, stuck in. Yeah. Um, we had a great question from Mr. S. Good morning to you, Mr. S. Um, uh, among the, the uh, many watching this morning, uh, alongside uh, Leela, Coach Turner, who we'll come back to. And this morning, my try something Portuguese is tomato jam. Have you ever had that, Bruce? Yep. What's it like? If you like tomatoes and you like jam, it's great. <laughs> I, like I like my tomatoes in Italian food, pasta, lasagna. Hey, tomato. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, where do you find it easy to make friends, Bruce? Uh, Mr. S is asking. In Portugal or in Spain? That's a really good question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 